Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector. This is my dog, Dan. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, please, if you get a chance, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. So we want to thank all the viewers and, and all the people who have commented on our videos and, and interacted with us, etc. So thank you guys for doing that. Uh, tonight, we're going to take a look at UFC on FX, George Sotaropoulos versus Ross Pearson. The first fight of the night we're going to cover is going to be Mike Pierce versus Seth Baczynski. This fight is going to be at 170 pounds. Now, Mike Pierce is coming off a victory over Aaron Simpson. It was a knockout punch, knocked out Aaron Simpson. And the uh, fight before that, he beat Carlos Eduardo Rocha via decision. So two impressive victories there for Mike Pierce. And for Seth Baczynski, he knocked out Simeon Thorson, and uh, he won a split decision over Lance Benoist. Uh, for this particular fight, I really like what I've seen from Mike Pierce recently. I know, uh, you know, we like to make fun of fighters who usually go to decision or grind out and kind of have this attitude that they want to put the fighter up against the cage so i know we like to make fun poke fun at that but um you know with mike pierce he's recent you know he's shown us in his last fight when he went up against the other guy who's known for putting up you know two guys going up against each other who are known for uh, their wrestling and their grindy style and what people hate to see you know this grappling kind of stuff but uh you know stall stall and wall wall and stall etc but he went out, they both went out there. Props to Aaron Simpson and Mike Pierce. They both went out there and knocked, you know, going for the knockout, going for an impressive. You know, say, you know what, Joe Silva, Dana White, you're not going to put me on the bottom of this fight card. You're going to put us right on top of the pay-per-view. We're going to come in there, knock each other's heads up. So, uh, so we got to give props to both these guys, you know. But with Mike Pierce, you know, I, I see his quality of his opponents. Gosh, heck, this Eduardo Rocha, guys, you guys might not know this guy too much, but man, this guy is good. And he, he should have beat he should have beat Jake Ellenberger that that night that uh, Anderson Silva knocked out Vitor Belfort with that front kick and uh, you know he's these quality opponents Kashyyyk Rocha Simpson Johnny Hendricks so uh, you know I see Mike Pierce's experience his ability to not only take the fight decision it submit it or uh, or knock out I see has a big advantage for Mike Pierce so I've got Mike Pierce winning this fight via knockout. Let's say he's going to get the knockout here. And as far as betting advice goes, I'm going to go with three stars. What do you got, Doug? Um, I got it as four stars for Mike Pierce. I oh, very good. don't think it will be a knockout. It could be. I think it's going to be a three-round decision. But, yeah, I absolutely think Mike Pierce is going to tear this guy apart. Um, and, you know, he's pretty much going to do what he did against Carlos Eduardo Rocha. I mean, that fight was originally called a split decision by judging error. But he destroyed his opponent, a guy that pretty much was undefeated until that point, if you don't count his his loss to uh, Jake Ellenberger. But, you know, you, jo you also got Mike Pierce coming off of a very controversial loss to Josh Koscheck. He, he, and that was a split decision. He lost to Johnny Hendricks, who's the number one contender now. And that was a split decision loss. So, And you got Seth Bozinski, who's got like a split decision win over Lance Benoist, who... Hasn't looked all that impressive lately. Mm. And, you know, he got the lucky knockout against Simeon Thorson, but he <laughs> was getting picked apart before he landed that lucky shot. Um, he left, he left, he, he basically left some holes against his last two opponents, and I think Mike Pierce is going to expose those big time. Um, I just ha I just see him destroying his opponent and um, possibly a knockout, like you said, but this one's definitely a four star sure. pick for me, Mike yep. Pierce. Some closing thoughts on this. So, you know, obviously, we both feel real strong about Mike Pierce and uh, his ability to beat uh, beat his opponent here. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where the line opens up at. It'll be interesting to see where the where the odds maker there sets the line at. So something to look look out for. But you know, you got a three star vote, three star vote of confidence from me, and, and four stars vote of confidence from my dog here. So uh, we'll, let's take a look at the next fight here for the card. We're gonna, we're gonna take a look at. Uh, a featherweight fight between Chad Mendez and Hakran Diaz. For Chad Mendez, his last two fights, he has a uh, knockout over Cody McKenzie. First round knockout. And then he himself got knocked out by Jose Aldo in one of my all-time favorite 
fights, all-time favorite moments in a fight where Jose Aldo jumps out into the crowd, into the Brazilian crowd. So what an incredible fight uh, for Jose Aldo. But uh, we'll take a look at Hector and Diaz here. He is uh, training with uh, Jose Aldo and you know some of the Brazilians down there. He has a victory over Yuri Alcantara decision, and then he has a, a, a victory over Paulo Dantas submission uh, in Shudo Brazil. Uh, with this particular fight, I don't think we're going to see a repeat in history here. I don't believe that uh, Hacker and Diaz is going to go out there and knock out Chad Mendez or submit him or anything like that. I see it, uh, Chad Mendez, um, you know, working real closely there, or working with his teammates at Alpha Male. He's going to go out there and you know, show that nasty ground and pound takedowns or knockout, you know, power. But uh, I see him, uh, you know, with, with uh, Cody McKenzie. Man, what a mismatch that was. I mean, you take this big, strong wrestler against this scrawny guy with submissions. Um, you know, it's kind of a, you know, it's just not a good not a good matchup there for, for Cody. But but with Chad Mendez, uh, you know, up until he met Jose Aldo, he was looking real good, just going through everybody. And I see him going through Hector and Diaz here. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Chad Mendez here via ground and pound, TKO. And as far as the, the betting advice goes here, I feel very confident in this fight. Um, but with, uh, with Hacker and Diaz training down there in Brazil, having Jose Aldo as a training partner, I can't go higher than three stars. So I'm going to go Chad Mendes, three stars betting advice. What do you got for the audience here, Doug? Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. Chad Mendes is going to win this fight. Um, I'm undecided if it should be a three or four star fight uh, after what you just said about him down there training with Jose Aldo. But, you know, Hacker and Diaz, he's got a really ridiculous-looking record considering he's got all his wins in his country of Brazil and his only draw and only loss. He fought in Japan and South Korea. Um, you know, Mendes looked excellent in his, in his comeback fight um, after losing to Jose Aldo, you know, but, you know, McKenzie wasn't really at the caliber of Chad Mendes, so you can't really, you can't really expect any less than what happened in the fight. Um, for Chad Mendez. I still have to give this fight to Chad Mendez based on the experience. He's got decision wins over some top caliber guys in, in the UFC. Um, and I just I just don't see I don't see this Hacker and Diaz guy uh, winning his first fight outside of Brazil. And so Chad Mendez, uh, decision. I'm just gonna say three and a half stars. Can I do that? Three and yeah. a half. Three and a half three and stars. A half, three and a half stars. Not quite four. Not yeah. quite three. Well, yeah. Three and a half. Three and a half stars. Yep. So, vote of confidence here with Chad Mendez for the both of us. Uh, of course, you know it's always interesting to see where the line opens up. Sometimes the price is just so ridiculously high that uh, that it's not even worth worth the bet um, because of the ridiculous price tag that comes with it. But uh, usually the the uh, the line is set around the right price, what it should be. But, uh, but we'll have to wait and see on that part, okay? Uh, for the next fight, we have a middleweight fight. We got the middleweight fight here that's going to be real interesting in my opinion. I can't wait to see this fight. We got uh, my tocayo, Hector Lombard versus Husamir Palajares. So with this fight, we got Hector Lombard coming off a decision loss to Tim Boach. Split decision loss to Tim Boach and a victory outside of the UFC over Trevor Prangley. And with Husamir Palajares, we have him coming off a loss. An incredible fight here, may I say, with Alan Belcher, where he lost uh, to TKO punches. And then he beat Mike Massenzi over via submission uh, heel hook. So... With this particular fight, what I really like about this fight is that I'm hoping that we get to see a powerful, explosive, uh, you know, strong uh, Hector Lombard. That's what I'm really hoping for. The Hector Lombard that we saw against Tim Boach, man, what an embarrassing fight. I did not like that fight at all for, for my tocayo Hector. And, uh, you know, I, I expected more out of him. You know, I expected a lot more, especially... You know, if you're with a name like Hector, you got to bring something to the table, right? I mean, you can't go in there with a name like Hector and fight the way he did. He yeah, did making fight. me look bad. But make, yeah, making me look bad. Come on, Hector. Come on, Hector. ¿Qué estás haciendo? Haz algo. That's what I was saying. Haz algo. Haz algo means do something. Haz algo. Do something. Hector Lombard's in the octagon like this. Like this. This is Hector Lombard. This is Hector Lombard. Miss, miss, miss. 
miss. What are you doing? And then uh, you see Tim Boach over there, you know, his old corner laughing. Ha ha, we got this fight. We got this fight. Hector doesn't want to fight. Ha 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 ha. Come on, man. What the heck's going on here? So I'm hoping, you know, that Hector Lombard here recovers. Recovers from that fight. Says, you know what? What the heck was I thinking going out there fighting like this? You know, Hector Lombard has a great background in judo. Excellent background in judo. And, um, you know, I hope he goes out there and utilizes his skills. With who's Amir Palajares, that, if you look, if you take an MMA dictionary and you look for the word loose cannon, look up the word loose cannon in, in, in the MMA dictionary and you will see a picture of who's Amir Palajares. <laughs> you want to talk about a guy jumping all over the octagon, looking like a big gorilla, jumping all over the place on top. Yeah, I won. Her being like, what are you doing up there, man? You got to fight. Yep, Get down yep, from there. Get yep. down from You got to fight this guy. He's not out yet. Oh, okay, okay. Let me oh, jump back. Okay. And this guy is just a loose cannon, putting his hands down here. Got his head, got his feet up here. I mean, this kind of guy, you cannot count on a guy like who's Amir Paul Harris. Now, I will tell you this. He is a just a trunk, a tree trunk of a man. I mean, this guy is just this. <laughs> Big guy over there rocks in there, tries to rip people's ankle, heels off and ankle off and all this crazy stuff. But, uh, you know, with, with this particular fight, I have no betting interest in it. None whatsoever. What Hector Lombard is going to show up. You know, you we were talking about this earlier and you commented that Hector Lombard is, a, is, a, is an example of a guy who uh, overhyped an over glorified record where perhaps you know his opponents and that's a great that's a great way to say it. his record you know isn't necessarily what uh what some people believe it is and and i don't we we really don't know what hector's going to show up i mean you just don't know right nope and with who's your palahar is man you got the definition of loose cannon going in and they're like now crazy and wild and hooting and hollering i want her being said hey man what are you doing get down from there you gotta fight so uh with well, this one just do not bet now uh, since I am going to be watching this and, and uh, as a fan here, and I'm just going to be watching it, enjoying it, really sitting back and rooting for the other Hector here. So I'm going to be say I'm going to be rooting for Hector Lombard. Now, as far as my fight picks goes, I really believe that uh, Hector's waited way too long to show up to, to show up in the same kind of same kind of mindset and momentum and everything that he showed up with against Husamir Palhar or against Tim Boach. So he's going to change that up, hopefully here against uh, Husamir. So uh, I'm going to go with uh, Hector Lombard. Hector Lombard is going to win this fight via uh, uh, knockout TKO. And uh, betting advice, do not bet. And don't get caught speeding on this fight. What do you got, dog? Uh, the last time Hector Lombard fought uh, in July, I was in the Bahamas on my honeymoon, so I didn't get a chance to see the fight. But based on what my dog says about the fight, I was very disappointed. I mean, I thought Tim Boach would win the fight, but I didn't expect it to be as boring as what I heard. Yeah. Um, having said that, you know, Hector Lombard is basically the Miguel Torres of <laughs> middleweights. Right. You know, he, he kind of comes in with this ridiculous record and then loses right away in a very unimpressive way. So, uh, you know, with, having said that, and then having to deal with a guy like Toquinho, you know, he... <sighs> Tree trunk. Tree trunk, you know? He goes out there, he's smashing Dan Miller, suddenly thinks he's the referee and stops the fight, jumps on the cage, starts celebrating, like you said. Herb Dean, guy, get down here, get down here. And then what happens? Dan Miller rocks him. He, he, he almost put him out. You know, how do you get knocked out by Dan Miller? And then, you know, with the Nate Marquot fight, same thing, you know. Hey, oh, oh. So, you know, I can't pick a yeah. guy just based on that. So <laughs> That's right. I almost forgot about so that. So you've got Nate. He said he said uh, he was telling the rep that um, that great, that uh, Nate Marquardt had uh, greased on his legs or, or uh, had put water or some kind of uh, Vaseline on his uh, legs. Remember that? Hey, hey, hey. And he gets himself knocked out. I, I, have, I, have, I have no idea, but I just feel like if Nate put him away, and Alan Belcher put him away, and Dan Miller almost put him away, Hector Lombard's going to put him away. So I'm going to say three stars, uh, Hector Ooh. Lombard, just because of what you said. I put a little more faith in him if he, if he, was, um, if he was up to caliber of what yeah. we were expecting. But I'm just going to say three stars. I don't see Paul Harris getting his tree trunk, leg lock, flying scissor heel hook thing, or whatever he's got <laughs> going for him. I don't see it happening. Um, considering Hector Lombard's never been finished, but this is the UFC, and these are the best guys in the world. 
even though some of them are loose cannons and some of them don't show up to fight. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens. Vamos, Hector! Vamos, Hector! Vamos, Hector! Lombard! All right, so uh, for the next fight, the main event, we have George Sauteropoulos making his comeback against Ross Pearson in the main event. So 155 pounds, uh, George Sauteropoulos, his last fight, he got knocked out by Rafael Dos Anjos. First round, pow, got knocked out. And then fight before that, he lost a uh, decision to Dennis Seaver. And for Ross Pearson, his last fight, he got knocked out, TKO by Cub Swanson. Fight before that, he got a decision victory over Junior Asun Sao. So we have the long-awaited return of George Sauteropoulos, and he's going to get to make that return in Australia. Um, for a while, I was very impressed with what, what I saw out of uh, George Sauteropoulos. I remember uh, one of the first times that I saw George fight was uh, when he fought Daddy Joe Stevenson. Remember that fight, Doug? Yep, I remember that and, one very uh, clearly. That was a very, very good fight for for uh, Sauteropoulos, and he was just on a tear. And uh, you know, then he fought, then he fought Dennis Seaver, lost. He fought Rafael dos Anjos and lost. So you know, he's been a little bit of a. Then he got injured, so it's kind of a you know, kind of a tough situation for him to be in. And uh, with Russ Pearson, uh, recently he got a DUI. And uh, going into the Cub Swanson fight, I, uh, I had a feeling that would affect him. I mean, I, with Cub Swanson, it's nothing, nothing to joke around about either. I mean, Cub Swanson is a good fighter. So I took Cub Swanson over, over Ross Pearson there. And it'll be interesting to see if Ross Pearson has had, had the chance to clear his head. And, he's, you know, he's, he's all there, ready to fight. But uh, with the fight being in Australia... Uh, and, and especially with Sauteropoulos making his comeback, I think that's going to give him the extra motivation that he's going to need to, to win this fight, to take the fight to the ground. I mean, obviously, Ross Pearson's going to want this fight standing up. George Sauteropoulos is going to want it on the ground. So uh, who's going to win? You know, how is this, how is this fight going to shape out? And uh, as far as betting advice goes, this, this fight is way too close to bet on. I don't care uh, what, what, the, uh, what the odds are on it. Um, if George Sauteropoulos can't land the takedown, we might see a repeat of what we saw against Rafael Dos Anjos. So with uh, Ross Pearson, you know, if he has his mind right and everything like that, he comes in there, uh, it's going to be a dangerous fight for, for either guy. We'll see whose game wins here. But uh, if I have to make a pick here, if I have to say, okay, this is who I have faith uh, in winning this fight, I'm going to have to go with George Sauteropoulos. Um, until Ross Pearson shows me that he's back, I mean, it's, it's up, in, it, up in the air. And with George Sauteropoulos, at least I know that he's back. He's back from his injury. He's back in Australia. So I'm going to go with Sauteropoulos. Do not bet. Uh, I'm going to say Sauteropoulos gets the, uh, the submission. What do you got, Doug? Yes, exactly. Uh, George Sauteropoulos has not fought uh, since July of last year. And Ross Pearson has fought three times since then. You know, so he's definitely had a little more action. Uh, than most guys would have had in that time. But um, before before George Sauteropoulos lost by knockout at UFC 132, um, he did lose to Dennis Seaver at uh, 127. So I'm thinking, you know, Ross Pearson coming off, like, the loss, and then his unimpressive win over Junior Sun Tzu, and I, I almost feel like the Edson Barboza fight was a fluke. Now you know, you know, we were we were pretty we had pretty high hopes for that guy after that fight. I think, and uh, the DUI is just kind of like another thing to add on to it. Um, it's it's really hard to count on a fighter who has a lot of ring rust like George Sauropoulos, mm. and he's coming off of a pair of losses. And then it's also hard to count on a guy who keeps changing weight classes like Pearson has. He's changed the divi he's changed his division. He's gone down to featherweight after he lost at lightweight against um, Barboza, and now he's or was it Barboza? Yeah, yeah, Barboza. Barboza. Yeah. He went down to featherweight, and now that he's lost to Club Swanson, he's coming back to lightweight. So you know he's just he just kind of like can't decide. He feels like he because he lost, he's doing something wrong, or he's he's fighting in the wrong division. So he can't really pick a division to fight in. So with that, all that being said, and everything, everything taken into account, I'm going to say that George Sauteropoulos is going to win this fight by a nasty, nasty armbar, mm. probably in the second or third round. 
And um, as a tool, I simulated this fight also. As, we, as you know, we always like to see what happens in a, in a simulation. This fight was very awesome on the simulations. George Sotteropoulos won 11 of 12 matches. Now, anything can happen in a fight. And by no means we're, we're taking this like, oh, yeah, bet the farm all day, no problems. Yeah, that's it's, a do it's, not bet it's, for me. It's, 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 it's definitely something to consider because the stats are updated regularly in the, in the game. But, you know, with George Sotteropoulos not fighting since the game came out, they haven't really had a chance to see what kind of person he's going to be. So with 11 or 12 matches, I find it really a, a really hard uh, chance that Ross Pearson wins this fight. Um, so as a tool, I'm agreeing with the game that George Sotteropoulos will win this fight um, pretty dominantly. I mean, Ross Pearson probably might show something in the first round, um, but after that, I just see George Sotteropoulos taking this fight away. For me, it's a three-star. If it was uh, not off, coming off of a couple of losses and not the long layover, I would probably, I would probably say five stars. But because mm. because of all that, I'm just going to say three stars. George Sotteropoulos wins this fight by armbar. All right, there you have it. There it is, right there. And uh, just some closing thoughts here uh, for for the uh, for the video that, we, that we're doing here tonight. Uh, we just want to take a chance to thank our fans and thank the people who are who are viewing these videos and especially the people who are viewing the whole thing you know we we uh we appreciate that and you know we recognize that and also uh the people who who are leaving comments that's always fun too you know see, seeing the comments and and uh mm -hmm. getting a chance to interact etc and uh you know feel free to uh, to visit our our youtube channel subscribe that way you get the automatic updates it makes it nice and simple and then our Facebook too, you know, obviously uh, the more likes we have, the more motivated, the more uh, time we can, we can invest and spend on doing these videos and analyzing the fights and trying to get down to the bottom of who's going to win this fight, where, what, 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 why, you know, all the different reasons, who, what, when, where, why, all that good stuff. So uh, what do you, what do you got to say here, Doug? What, what, uh, yeah. what thoughts you got here for the viewers? I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see where we're going with this. Uh, we have a really fun time doing this. It, it's kind of a hassle to set up all this equipment to, to film it. Yeah. But, you know, we love to do it. We're, we're having fun. And as long as you guys keep watching and subscribing, yep. um, we're, we're going to keep doing it. Yep. So uh, thank you guys. And, and hopefully uh, we'll get a, a podcast going here or something where we can sit down and talk and not, not have to worry yeah. about trying to make the, the video, yeah. uh, you know, a certain length, a certain length yeah. and trying to get it a certain time. So, uh, it'll just be more off the cuff, just yeah, kind of just thoughts. Shoot the and shit. Shoot, yeah, exactly. So, uh, thank you guys. And, uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.